Today I'm working with Topaz Studio 2. This is episode number 29 of my Creative Toolbox series. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Well, let's get started. I'm working from Photoshop again because that's just the way I like to work. You can work right out of uh, Topaz Studio 2 if you like, but I'm showing you my workflow, but you can adapt it for yours. Okay, I've duplicated my background layer. And by the way, I've also linked this uh, image in the uh, description below so you can download it and follow along with me. It's a really cool image. Now, you know how much I love uh, Creative Blur, and they've used some Creative Blur around the edge in this image here, and I really like it. I think it really adds a beautiful, elegant look. But I thought we could take this image a little, a little bit further and give it some creative flair. There's a couple reasons that I duplicated the background layer, and one is because I want to work non-destructively. You never want to work on your actual image itself. You want to work non-destructively, okay? And the second reason I've done that is because after I bring this back in from Topaz Studio 2, I may want to pull the opacity back and let some of the original image show through. So there's a twofold reason why I did that. Let's go ahead and rename this to uh, Topaz Studio 2. I'll just call it TS2 for short. And now it's time to launch Topaz Studio. Who says creative photography has to be hard? Now, I'm only using two different uh, tools on this image. I'm using the uh, texture tool, and I'm using the color overlay tool. I'll be putting two textures on here and adding a nice color overlay. I called it a tool, but it says filter here. So tool filter, all these different programs call them filters. They call them tools. I get confused, so forgive me for calling it the wrong thing. So let's click Add Filter, and let's go to Impression, not Impression, Dave. You want to go to the Texture Tool. So we're going to add our first texture. Now, this texture right here, which is called Cotton Candy, it just happens to be the one that came up when I clicked on the tool, and guess what? That's the one I'm going to use. But what I want to do with this is I don't want this color in here. So I'm going to change this uh, blend mode from normal. This is very important down to luminosity. And when you do that, you strip the color out of it and you're just left with that nice texture. Now that's too much. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take the opacity and pull the opacity back a good bit. I just want a little bit of that uh, kind of granular bumpy pattern. Let me zoom in so you can really see it. See what it's doing in there? It's just adding a nice little kind of a grainy fog to it. Now, I want to pull that back a good bit. And I pulled mine back to around a, a 0.12, a 0.13, somewhere around there. Let's go with 0.12. I'm not going to mess with anything else here uh, in terms of brightness, contrast. However, these are all very valuable and important sliders here. But in my case, I really don't need it unless... You know, one might be, I might want to add a little more detail so I can pull this up and let that grain show through a little bit more. But I don't think so. I'm going to leave it right where it was. But you have detail tools here and you can add extra saturation. Now, of course, I put this in luminosity mode, so I strip the color out of it. But that's all I need to do with this particular uh, texture right here. And if we, uh, let me zoom in again so you can see it's on there. I'll shut it off. So that's before and there's after. Now let's go ahead and add another texture. And this time, let's see, what texture do I want? I use this texture called Concrete, which is right here. Now, by the way, you can uh, click on this little uh, magnifying glass and you can search for the texture. Like if you know a name or a texture, you can click this and then type the name in. It'll find it for you. But mine's right here, Concrete. So let me go ahead and click that on. And already you can see, looks pretty, pretty cool. It's a... Uh, it gives it a nice artistic flair, and that's the look I'm going for here. But what I've done on this one is I've changed the blend mode. Now, right now, we're in the normal blend mode. And if I take this opacity and drag it the whole way to the right, you can see that's what that texture looks like. Now, a lot of times I'll use these textures just in the normal blend mode, and they look quite beautiful sometimes when you just pull the opacity back and let a little bit through, and that looks really nice right there. And I kind of like that, but I did something a little different. I'm going to pull this up. And I'm going to change the blend mode. One of my favorite blend modes is overlay. And another one is soft light. Soft light's just a little bit, uh, 
not quite as contrasty. Now, the, the overlay in soft light, this whole area right here deals with contrast, okay? But I really like these. But overlay is the one I use. But you know what? I think I might end up using soft light. It's just a little more delicate. And this is a nice delicate, you know, could be a cup of coffee, a cup of tea with this nice flower here, this little linen, whatever you want to call it. Ladies, you know what that is. <laughs> I'm bad with names. If you watch my videos, you know that. Okay, so that's looking really nice. Now let's play with the opacity. Let's give it more opacity. Let's pull it back. See how much we want. I don't like to overdo my textures, but... Wherever you think it looks good, as you always hear me saying, stop at that point. That's where you should be. And I like that right there. Now, let's click this eye. Here's the before and here's the after. And to me, that's beautiful. And we could stop right here, but I want to show you one more filter, and that's the color overlay filter. Let's go ahead and add the color overlay, which is right here in the creative section, color overlay. Now, when I open this up you'll notice we it says color and we have this little drop down deal right here and if i click it you see a color tool comes up here okay i'm going to cancel that for a second but it's putting on this white creamy white color here okay it's not a, a full white i don't believe and you notice the opacity is defaulted at 0.30 in the normal blend mode now that's really beautiful it's a little too strong but Check how you can use this out as a nice effect to add just like a little bit of fogginess to the image here, okay? Like a little creamy blur over top of the image here, which is really, really quite beautiful. And now that could, that could be a nice look right there. So bear that in mind. But what I want to do is add a color to my image, okay? So what I'm going to do is um, take this opacity, take it the whole, whole way off. Now, I want to use a color that's already in this image, and I think I want to use this pink color that's right on this uh, flower. So what I'll do is click on this uh, drop down here and my color tool comes up. There's a little color picker here. Now, depending whether you're using a Mac or PC, it's probably gonna look different. So I'm gonna choose my color picker tool and I'm gonna find like a nice pink type color right here, okay? And I'm just gonna click, okay, I'm gonna accept that color and that's the color right there. So I'm gonna take the opacity now and I'm gonna start to pull it up. Now, I can leave it in the normal blend mode and just add a nice little fog look to the image like that. But I'm going to do something different. I'm going to pull it up even more. And if I keep taking it to the right, you'll see there's the color right there. Kind of like a pinkish salmon color. I don't know. Whatever color it is, it is. But I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to color. And when I do, you'll notice it's just adding that color tint over the whole image. So it's tinting the image that color. Now that's too much, so I'm going to take the opacity. Let's take it the whole way off. And now let's start to pull it up. Okay, and we're just going to add a hint of that color right there. I think it looks really good. Now let me click this eye. Here's the before and here's the after. Isn't that pretty? Now I can also come here and change it to any other color I wanted to. So let's click this again here. And what if we wanted it to have a little bit of a blue tint to it? Or more of a uh, maybe a sepia look, something like that. How about green? Probably not green, but maybe. How about a pink, a nice light pink on there? Maybe even less. Okay, so that's kind of pretty too. Now, if I click uh, OK, it'll accept that color. If I hit click uh, Cancel, it'll go back to the color I chose. But I like it. I think it's really nice. Hey, leave comments and questions in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. But again, here is the before that color overlay and the after. A nice subtle little tint. But subtlety sometimes can be your best friend. Now, if we click on the either the image or the canvas area, left click with our mouse and hold down, there's our before, which is really a beautiful image in its own right. And here's the after. But now we have a bit of a texture on it. A picture like this would be something you'd really maybe want to hang in your kitchen or your dining room. It gives you that nice, warm, cozy feeling. All right, if you're happy with everything, all you need to do is click accept. That is if you started from Photoshop. If you didn't start from Photoshop, go to File and Save Project As and give it a name. I'm going to click Accept and that'll send me right back into Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. Now, here's our layer right here. So let's shut it off. There's our before and here's our after. But remember at the start of the tutorial, I told you I also leave the background in case I want to like ease back on this um, effect from this layer right here. So let's take the opacity 
and let's start to pull it back a little bit. See if I pull it back, I can let that underlying image start to pull in. So if I felt I was a little bit too strong at 100%, which I don't think I am, I like it, but I could pull it back and say like, you know what, that's more the look I'm looking for. But no, for me, it's going to 100% and I am happy with it. Well, there it is. I added a digital frame from Topaz Studio 2 on it just to give us an idea what it would look like framed. I really like that uh, filter just to see what a frame would look like on my images and also to present them online. It's a, it's a nice look as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon that every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, Happy editing! <laughs>